My name is Kurt Squire. I'm a professor here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in curriculum instruction. And my research looks at game-based learning technologies. And my interest really started as a kid myself. I played a lot of Sid Meier's games, Sid Meier's Pirates and Civilization, which developed uh, or contributed to my lifelong interest in history. And so from that point on, I got interested. What, what are the effects of games like Civilization or SimCity on people who play them? And how might they be used as a way to leverage your interest or grow, grow people's interest in academic domain? Um, since then, we've done a lot of studies on how kids play games like Civilization, what they learn from it, what they don't learn from it, and how it can be a key part of developing a lifelong interest in history. Um, one thing we found is that for many of those kids um, who really play a lot of historical games, um, they do develop lifelong interests and passions that grow into their professional interests, but they're also very much part of a social kind of situation or social fabric. So most often they're playing along with friends, with parents, and it's um, not just a solitary kind of thing but it's something where you are uh, becoming a more expert player along with people that you care about. Um, but since then, what we've been doing a lot of work is how can we design technologies based on games to really get kids interested and in, engaged in academic domains, particularly in school settings. Um, and one thing that's been really exciting over the last couple years is we're starting to finally get models of curriculum where teachers can really build games and, and use games as a part of their everyday classrooms. So for one example, we've been working with some teachers uh, in a nearby district called Verona where they took one of our games called Citizen Science, and this is a role-playing game where you, uh, children play as kids who are doing a study of a local lake, trying to figure out kind of what's going on with the lake. Um, and then from there, they, they transition to playing games that are based in the field on mobile devices like iPhones, uh, using a technology called Eris that we developed here at Wisconsin. And then the last phase, they go out and actually do studies. And in this case, they actually did a study of their local pond, and something kind of cool happened. The city was trying to decide what to do about this retaining pond. Um, and it had gotten um, kind of overgrown, and they had some issues with uh, um, water quality there. And because the kids had actually been studying it, they were able to go to their local town council and present their findings, what they found, what they knew about it, and what they thought should be done. And in this mind, in my mind, this is really how games should be used. So in this case, what they did is they introduced a topic, they raised student interest. So when we did kind of simple pre-post studies, we found that learning typically went up because kids at the beginning just didn't really care. Um, they knew very little about lakes. They didn't, why would you want to study lake science? Um, they just really had very low interest in it. But in this case, they used the game for that in that way. And then as they played through the curriculum, they became more active knowledge producers to the point where they actually were engaged in authentic practices, as in this case, you know, presenting in front of a town council. So we're really excited that this technology that really in the last 20 years went from just kind of a theoretical possibility is now getting out there in the hands of teachers and kids, and we think could have a really dramatic impact on learning in the future uh, decades to come.